What's happening everyone? In this video we'll be covering the sieve of Eratosthenes, which is a simple ancient algorithm used for finding all of the prime numbers up to any specified limit. In the beginning of this video we'll introduce the underlying idea along with some history behind the sieve. Then later we'll open up a coding editor and implement the function using the Python coding language. We'll also run some tests to compare its efficiency to other methods used to generate primes. As always, if you find the video interesting or informative, be sure to throw me a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to my channel if you'd like to stay up to date on the rest of my Python coding content. So the man himself, Eratosthenes, was a Greek mathematician, geographer, poet, astronomer, and music theorist who lived from 276 to 195 BCE. He was born in Cyrene, now a part of modern-day Libya, a city which had been founded by Greek colonists centuries earlier and which later became the capital of the five Greek cities of Pentapolis, or North Africa. Eratosthenes dedicated his life to education, and by the year 240 BCE, had become the chief librarian at the Library of Alexandria, situated in the Nile Delta of northeastern Egypt. He invented the discipline of geography, and is well known for his calculation of the circumference of the Earth, which was within a 10% margin of error. He was a friend of the mathematician Archimedes, but criticized the Greek barbarian racial purity theories of fellow Greek philosopher Aristotle, believing instead that every nation contained both good and bad. Eratosthenes was one of the most preeminent scholarly figures of his time and produced works covering a vast area of knowledge before and during his tenure at the Library of Alexandria. Unfortunately, only fragments of his work remain after the destruction of the library, an event arguably caused by Julius Caesar who started fires all over the city of Alexandria during his civil war in 48 BCE. Other causes may be the attack of the Roman Emperor Aurelian between 270 and 275 AD, a decree from Coptic Christian Pope Theophilus of Alexandria in 391 AD, or the Muslim conquest of Egypt in 642 AD. Now on to the main topic of the video. The Sieve of Eratosthenes was referenced earliest by Nicomachus of Gerasa's Introduction to Arithmetic between 60 and 120 AD. The Sieve is one of a number of prime number sieves and is one of the most efficient ways to find all the smaller prime numbers. To find all the prime numbers less than or equal to a given integer n, we first create a list of all consecutive integers from 2 up through our number n. We now create a new variable p and initially set it equal to 2 which is the smallest prime number. We then enumerate the multiples of p by counting to n from 2p in increments of p, and then mark them off our list. For example, we'll first mark off 2p, then 3p, then 4p, and so on. p itself should not be marked off the list, only the multiples of p. We then find the first number greater than p, which is not marked off already. If there is no such number, stop the algorithm. Otherwise, p now equals this new number, which is the next prime, and repeat the process from step 3, marking off the multiples of p. When the algorithm terminates, the numbers remaining, not marked off the enumerated list, are all the primes below the specified number n. The algorithm has an exponential time complexity with regard to input size, and requires big O of n in terms of memory consumption, or linear memory complexity. We'll now open up a coding editor and implement the sieve using the Python coding language. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do now that we have our coding editor open is import the time module, which we're just going to be using to uh, perform the time comparisons between the sieve of Eratosthenes and um, any other sieves we might want to compare it to. In this case, we're going to be comparing it to the sieve of Atkin, which was created in 2004, and it should be a great deal more efficient than the sieve of Eratosthenes. Um, also note that my implementation of the sieve may not necessarily be the most uh, computationally efficient, but I think it's a way in which you can still kind of understand what's going on in the code without having a lot of ambiguity um, as to what each line of code is actually performing. So <clears throat> uh, we can throw the sieve inside of a function. We'll call it sieve of Eratosthenes. Um, and we'll be passing one input. It's going to be an integer. And it's going to be the value n up to which we want to filter out primes. And so the first thing we're going to be writing is just uh, the start time. We're going to be recording the time at which we start the function. Then at the end we'll be recording the time we finish. And here we can just write out the print function we're going to be using to uh, report how much time we used. 
Now the first thing we're going to actually be doing inside of the algorithm, other than the, just the time bookkeeping, is creating a list of consecutive integers from 2 up to our number n. And we're doing that in a somewhat roundabout way. We're just going to be creating a list of Boolean values, and a Boolean can just take the value of either true or false. And each one of these locations, if it's true, is signifying that we have a prime number at uh, that index. And then if it's false, it means it's a composite number or it's not a prime number. So we'll just initialize this by writing out true, and then the length of the list, which is going to be of length n minus 1. Uh, because recall, we're going to be starting off with the value 2. We're not starting off at 0 or 1. We're starting off at 2. Um, and then we're going up to the actual value n. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is creating our p variable, which is going to store our current prime. And then, if you recall, that's just set to 2 in the beginning. And now we're going to be <coughs> iterating and enumerating um, all of the multiples of p. And then crossing off each one of those multiples in our is prime list to signify that it's a composite number and not a prime number. Um, and then, so what we're multiplying our p value with uh, to create each one of the multiples, uh, we're going to call the multiplier. And this is just set to 2 in the beginning. And then we can calculate our multiple just by doing p times our multiplier. And then this is simply going to be, if you recall from earlier in the video, it's going to be 2p, 3p, 4p, and so on. So our multiple is going to start off with 2p, uh, but we need to iterate in another nested while loop to go through all the different possibilities, so 2, 2p, then 3p, 4p. Um, and so we're going to do another while loop here and iterate while the multiple is less than or equal to n. So we stop once our multiple gets past n because that's the maximum value that we're actually going to be assessing. And then for each multiple we're going to be marking off the element at that index in the is prime list to signify that it's a composite number. And we're actually going to be specifically marking off at index multiple minus 2. So I can kind of just illustrate what's going on here. Um, if we have our is prime list, which is just going to be true and false, so we can signify that as just ones and zeros. So just do one when we're starting off. So we have all of our Boolean values here in our is prime list. Obviously, this is going to be a little bit longer. Um, and then each one of these, the first element at the is prime list is supposed to be signifying two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then six, and then seven, then eight, obviously, and so on. So the first uh, multiple we're looking at is going to be uh, 2 for p times 2 for the multiplier. So we're going to be looking at the element 4. So we're going to be crossing off 4 in our is prime list, and we want to figure out what index 4 is at in the is prime list, and it's going to be 0, 1, 2. And that's where we're getting our multiple minus 2 index here. It's simply because the is prime list is starting off at integer 2, and then it increments itself on each index. So we have to subtract 2 to get down to the actual correct index in the is prime list. So after we've marked off the composite number in our is prime list, we want to increment our multiplier by 1 and calculate our new multiple, which is going to be, once again, just p times multiplier. And then after we've iterated over all of the different possible multiples of our prime number, p, we're going to want to go through and iterate over each one of the is primes to figure out where the next prime number is that we can use as our new p value. So we can say for i prime in enumerate is prime. And the enumerate function is just going to be um, letting us iterate over the is prime list while also returning an index, so the current index that we're looking at. So I'll start at 0, then go 1, then 2, then 3, as we go through our different indices in our is prime list. And so here we're going to say, if we have a prime number and prime number is greater than our current value, our current p value, uh, we're going to say p is equal to i plus 2. So the new prime number is going to be equal to the index plus 2. And we're doing plus 2 once again for the same reason we were doing um, index minus 2 here. Uh, if we want to map from 
our index to the actual prime value we have to add to if we want to map from the actual prime value back to the index we have to subtract to. Um, so if we found our our next prime and it's larger than our current prime we're going to be breaking out of this for loop and then at the end of this uh, for loop we're going to be writing an else statement and then we're going to be breaking in that case. So that the else in this after the for loop is going to be saying um, if we go through the entire for loop and we never get to this break function or this break statement um, we're going to be breaking outside of the for loop. But if we do go through the for loop and at one point we do break out we're not going to enter into this else statement. Um, so if we do enter into the else statement we're going to be basically effectively that's saying that we've reached the end of the algorithm and we can break out of the overall initial while loop. Whereas if we break out here, then we know that we have to calculate the entire thing again using a new p-value or a new prime value. So now that we've filtered out all of the composite values in our isPrime list, uh, we can print those out after recording the final time. Uh, we can just iterate over the same as we were earlier for i and prime in enumerate isPrime. Um, and then we'll say if we have a prime number, uh, just print out the actual number rather than the index. And recall, obviously, when we're mapping from index to value, we're adding to because our is prime list is supposed to be starting off at the value two, even though the index of the first element is zero. And then pretty much that's it for the algorithm. We can test this out using different integer values. So we can say C of Eratosthenes. 100, for example, we can switch over to our terminal and run this. And we can see here we have reported correctly all of the prime numbers from 2 up to 100. And we can see that took a pretty small amount of time, 0 0.00009 seconds. And because this has exponential time complexity, we're going to see a pretty big jump once we go to 1,000. So we can switch back here. So we can see here, we've already jumped up to uh, two thousandths of a second. And then if we go up to 10,000, should see a bigger jump. Uh, yes, yeah, so now we have 15 hundredths of a second. So now I'm going to implement the uh, sieve of Atkin, and then we can compare that to our sieve of Eratosthenes. So this here is the sieve of Atkin. Uh, it's a little bit more complex computationally than the sieve of Eratosthenes. I'm not going to go into it specifically. We could do another video on that later. But effectively, we're doing the same thing here in the end. We're recording the end time of the algorithm and then printing out every one of the primes and then reporting the total computation time. Um, so now I'm going to kind of change the functions a little bit so that we can make the time comparison a little bit more simple. So now we can see uh, the various comparisons in time between the sieve of Eratosthenes and the sieve of Atkin. Um, so with just going up to integer 10, it took us almost no time with either of them. Um, but as we go down from 100 up all the way down to 100,000, we can see that there grows a much larger difference between uh, the two algorithms with the sieve of Eratosthenes, time complexity increasing exponentially while the uh, sieve of Atkin also increases exponentially, it seems, but at a much slower rate. <clears throat> so, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If so, definitely throw me a thumbs up. If you found any errors in my code, um, make sure to post a comment and explain what you saw. Um, also, consider subscribing to my channel if you want to stay up to date with all of my Python coding content. And hope I'll see you guys in the next video.